Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Unity shader tutorial. In this one, we're going to be creating a wireframe shader, which is a request that I've got to make. Uh, it's actually quite a simple shader, but I've got a list of uh, you know shader videos that people want me to make. So I'm going to start off with the ones that are a bit simpler that can be done in Shader Graph currently without the new features that are yet to come. Uh, so we're going to be making a sh um, sorry a wireframe shader that looks like this. Now, obviously, there's different ways of making. Um, a particular shader and so here I've got a sphere and a capsule just to show the different effects and I'm gonna move the camera around so I've actually decided to use the world view um, in this and obviously I'll show you how that works so that depending on how you're looking at it the um, wireframe looks different I think it's a cool effect it's an optional effect obviously if you want it to look a bit different then you could change that so obviously move it up and down and left and right and as we uh, go out and in obviously this is just the camera I'm moving but I think it has a pretty cool effect to it to be honest um, and we can also, I, I've not made it for the little test display, but I'll make it so that you can change the tiling of it, you can change the offset, you can change the, you know, color of the lines, whatever you want. Anyway, I'm going to show you how to make it. So let's first of all delete the shader. Boom, there it goes. So let's make a new material after we delete this one. So as always, new material, wireframe mat, and then we'll put that into the sphere and into the capsule. And then we need to create a new shader PBR graph and we'll go wireframe shader. And I spelled shader wrong. And just for the sake, so that I don't get annoyed at myself, shader. Okay. There we go. Let's open this up. Oh, I called it the same name as my uh, other shader, so it's not wanting to open. Um, okay. Shader PBR. There we go. Oh, we've got ourselves another shader. Okay, so. The things we need for this, all right, first of all, as you see down here, I have a texture. Now, when I thought about how to make a wireframe thing, I first got a bit stuck thinking about, you know, how am I going to get the lines? But then I used my, you know, simple brain and was like, well, I could just get image texture off, you know, the, the internet and there you go. Or you could even just make your own in Photoshop really quickly. Um, so you want to import a texture for the wireframe. It's actually nice to have a really simplistic one like this. It's only 300 by 300 and it's just a white cross. And that's so that... Um, you can then scale it up and it won't actually lose quality because you're kind of scaling it down. You're putting that picture into a smaller place. So you don't you don't see any quality loss, which is always nice, unless you stretch it. Um, anyway, so once we've got our you know thing, we always need to put our textures into a uh, sample texture 2D so we can then use all the values of it because we want to change the UV and we want to output the RGB. Now, if we currently just put this to albedo, as you might expect, it basically just takes this material and stretches it over. Now we also need to apply the shader. So currently in the scene view, you'll see we have our one thing spread out across the whole object, which doesn't look great. One thing that we need to definitely do is, sorry, uh, I hit the microphone. We need to make it so the tiling is so that this texture covers the whole object properly. So the way I'm going to do this is, you know, as with any tiling thing, we want a uh, tiling an offset node where the output goes to the UV and then with this as you see we change tiling we can have more on the X and more on the Y or well, we can change the offset to make it move and whatever so the way we're going to change the uh, let me just put it back to default the way we're going to change the uh, tiling is we want it to be dependent on the position of the camera now I'll show you what it looks like with the different views so you can decide for yourself what you want I like the uh, the view one the most. So obviously, first of all, is world, and world doesn't look great. Um, it looks okay. Obviously, front on it looks cool. Now keep, I will be showing you how to get rid of the stupid like black bits. That's very easy. Um, but if you come to the side, because it's a texture being put onto a, like a, a spherical object, it, it doesn't. That's not how a wireframe normally would look. If you do want that and you're okay with that, then you know you might just stick to this. And when you move around, the wires stay in the same place. But the other options are we can have you know can have tangent which probably looks stupid I don't, I've never actually used tangent Ugh, that looks disgusting um, but we can use view which is the one I want to use where it depends on your view in the world which gives it a really cool and weird effect but I just like how how weird it looks I guess and then there's also object was that the first one I showed I don't think I've showed object view and that's basically you know well depending on the object uh, it moves with it. That's basically the default, actually. Yeah, that is just the default. Um, so yeah, we don't want that. I'm gonna stick to view. So, yep. Yeah, now we've got a thing. Now the shaders. You know, it's a very simple shader. This video won't be as long as usual. Um, 
one thing we need to do or we can do is we can move the offset so normally this moves with the world okay this like the offset is how the camera moves you see it's you move your camera around that moves with the camera um, like if you focus on a point and move the camera in the same way it moves with the camera so this point my mouse is on as i move left up down right up down whatever it always is there so we want to possibly this is up to you to add a time node where the time can be the tiling obviously this will oh this doesn't actually work for view it'll work for object mode uh and for oh sorry no i'm just putting it onto tiling not offset that's just me being stupid there we go so now as we move it moves but it also moves on its own which is cool and weird at the same time and it's up to you but maybe you only want the lines to move up and down maybe you only want to move left and right the way you would do that as normal um so let, let, let's do this we might as well so the video isn't too short we will do the normal um combine with the uh, output going to the offset and then we want uh two multiplies where we take in, uh, I've done this in a previous video, so it should be easy enough to follow along. So I want a time uh, here and a time here. I'll just put those on the inside. And we want the output to R and the output to G. And then we need two inputs, so a uh, vector one for um, like horizontal movement. And then vertical movement. Let's just say we add one to. Let's, let's say we have a one on horrors, one on vertical, uh, which is actually what it's currently showing now. Uh, and obviously we can tweak those. And that's how we make the tiling. We can change the tiling from the shader now. So if we're going to the uh, material, even is what I meant to say. Increase the vertical movement. Decrease the vertical. Have some horizontal as well have it really fast diagonally or have it just horizontal obviously you can reverse it with negative have whatever effect you want I'm just gonna go for um, that for now why not do what you want um, so that's one benefit you can do this you can obviously change the wireframe like that uh, what else should we do do you reckon uh, I reckon we should make it so that you can also change the tiling so we'll simply take in a vector 2 uh, whoops, we want to get the vector 2 from here, so we can have it in this vector, I'll just call it tiling, that's simply what it's doing. Um, we'll set it to 1-1, one, one so that that's just the default, and then we'll put tiling into tiling. There we go. So now we can also change that in here. So let's say you thought, you know, you want your um, squares to be basically half the size, you can go tiling, 2-2. Two, two. You wouldn't really want to have these numbers be different, otherwise, well you can obviously, but it changes the width of the thing. So like if I have it uh, 4x 2y, uh, it's actually kind of reversed. It's 4y 2x, I guess, um, in how the tiling works. Like, so if I had, oh no, sorry, I have five amount on the x. Yeah, that, that is right, um, for every two up, or like one across for every one up. If I had two across for every one up, that's why you get two uh, in one height. Whereas if I did one, two, you would get like, um, two height and one across. It, you should you must get what that means. <laughs> That's probably not the, the best way of explaining it, but you should already know what that means. Um, but anyway, what else is there that I should cover, do you reckon? Uh, oh, sorry, I had need to show you how to actually get rid of the wireframe thing. So instead of putting it into albedo like I was showing at the start, we actually want to put it into alpha so that the white bits get shown and the black bits don't. And then we can say, well, this is actually uh, transparent. And just so it looks a bit clearer, we'll change this to white so that you can actually see it. So basically, the albedo is just... The, the whole mesh itself is completely white, but we are just cutting out all the black bits. That's why it looks like a wireframe. So now you get this effect, where under the camera it looks like this, which is what I showed you at the start. But obviously, we now have some parameters we can change. Um, one of the parameters you want to change is the color of the line. So I could just add a color, so I can say uh, line color. And obviously, I'll leave the default as white. I'm going to plug that into the albedo. And then now, if I go to the material, and then we say, well, we want a red line, or a black line, or a pink, or a blue, or a everything line. That's what you do. 
And then I guess the only way you can really increase the thickness of the line is by actually just changing your texture to have a thicker line. There's no simple way I can think of of doing that because we're using a texture, so you would have to change the texture if you wanted it to be any different. Um, one other thing you might want to say is, um, well, emission. You might want to have like a kind of glow to the bit you can see. I don't know. You might want to pink emission. You can turn up your on your camera effects when you have um, post processing. You could then. Oh, yeah, also emission kind of overrides uh, the the main color if you haven't noticed. Obviously, if it was a white normal color in a a uh, pink emission, then it'll go pink. If you have emission on and then you uh, turn bloom on. Uh, it'll make the emission glow more as you tweak the bloom value. Uh, that can give cool effects if you do it right. But I'm not going to set up post-processing in this video. But anyway, uh, here is the shader for wireframe. I hope this explained it perfectly to the person who uh, asked for it. Um, I've obviously got a... Uh, let me just close these. I've obviously got a um, backlog of I've got, I've got like a text file of different shaders people want to make and some of them are not really achievable with the current shader graph but a few of them are so i'll keep making those uh trying to make daily videos but uh if any of you are still watching at this point i really want suggestions on what kind of uh like unity tutorials to make for the actual engine itself like so you know how to make a game but what kind of game whether you want like a 2d platformer or a uh, you know 3d racing or I don't know RPG like how to make an inventory system or how to make a, a cooldown system whatever I you know how to make a home screen do this that the other I, I want ideas for tutorials because I could just keep making them but I don't know if anyone watched them I want to make ones that people want to see uh, I know most people are here for shader graph but sadly I can't just infinitely make videos on shader graph because they'll slowly begin to overlap and just be the same things again and again when it's more um, versatile and you can make more things in it then obviously yeah it'll be more interesting to that as well but anyway so yeah um we have a discord channel if you've not already joined in the description uh liking and subscribing to the video to the channel would mean a lot to me um as well as leaving suggestions that's arguably more important because i want to know what people want to see um thanks for all the support anyway I've, the channel's been going pretty quickly and i'm happy to see that um i think i've mentioned everything now so yeah if you uh, haven't already left a comment on uh, what you want me to make videos on then please do it would help a lot but anyway Thanks for watching and goodbye.